Okay, good evening everyone. How's everyone doing? Uh, thanks for coming out on this rainy night all the way to Southampton. I know some of you made the trip from Stony Brook, so uh, we're glad you could join us. Another exciting uh, lecture in our fall lecture series, our second in installment in a series of four. Uh, tonight we're very fortunate to have Damien Chapman here as our speaker. Damien's from uh, New Zealand. He did his PhD at Nova Southeastern. Uh, he did a postdoc at the University of Miami with uh, Ellen Pickett, and then came with her here to join SOMA Stony Brook as a faculty member in 2009. And, uh, and this is his second presentation in Southampton, in the Southampton Lecture Series, uh, making him, I believe, probably second to me in the rate and frequency of presentations. Presentations. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll try to keep it up. And, uh, but anyway, we're glad he's here tonight to tell us about the great white sharks in New York. So, Dr. Damien Chapman. All right. Thanks very much. Can everybody hear me in the back? All right. So, this is kind of fun talk for me. Usually, I get up and talk about all the science that I do. When Chris contacted me about doing the, the talk, I, I, I jumped at it because this summer, I don't know if anybody knew, but there was a few weekends where the Coast Guard issued a great white shark advisory for the north, northeast US. And I thought that was hysterical because that's kind of like issuing a Godzilla warning for Japan. It's just such a crazy uh, thing to, to think that, that the Coast Guard would issue this warning that some guy saw a white shark on, in the northeast and that that means, I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with that. I suppose you stay away from all water everywhere. But um, I just thought that was amazing because anyone who knows anything about sharks and white sharks in particular knows, you know, they live in the ocean. And there is ocean around Long Island and the Northeast. So, yeah, there, there are white sharks there. You don't really need um, a Coast Guard advisory to tell you that. So I thought it would be good. Um, to come out and talk about white sharks in New York because maybe I'm the only one that knows there's white sharks around here. So a little bit of background about sharks. Um, sharks have been around for a long time. They evolved more than 400 million years ago. They've been swimming around our oceans for that long. And they, they have a reasonable species diversity. There's around 400 species and we're still discovering new species of sharks in the deep ocean and uh, remote locations. It's about 400 species. There's quite a diversity. There's not one kind of generic shark. This is a whale shark, Rhynchodon typus. I believe there was a talk here um, not so long ago about whale sharks. This is the largest fish on Earth. It grows to about 45 feet uh, maximum. They're a harmless plankton feeder. So they're, they're a, a nice big animal at one end of the spectrum. Then you've got little sharks. I mean, most sharks, about 80% of sharks, are smaller than this. People don't really know that. This is a cookie cutter shark, Estesius uh, brasiliensis. So you can see there's a pencil right there to give it some scale. And obviously there's some fingers. That's a little shark. But for a little shark, this guy tackles some big prey. So that is actually the wound from a cookie cutter shark on a California sea lion. So these guys just hang out in the midwater and they, they ha they're bioluminescent. And uh, big animals like tuna and cetaceans and, and, marine and uh, pinnipeds go after it thinking it's prey and then this little thing turns the tables on them, swims up to them and grabs on and then just takes a plug of flesh and then swims away. So the little sharks, they're very, very, very cool. Um, uh, definitely don't discount them. This is a, a baby lemon shark. This just illustrates that sharks live in all parts of the ocean. This, is, this little lemon shark was caught right here in the surf zone at Kennedy Space Center. So they live in very, some sharks live in very, very shallow water. Um, this, on the other hand, this is a blunt-nosed six-gill shark, Hingsaxius griseus. I just caught this thing three weeks ago in the Exuma Sound in the, in the uh, Bahamas. That, that, that fish is about 12 feet long, I think, that one was. I'm leaning over taking a DNA sample. Um, big green eye uh, on it, which uh, helps it pick up what light there is down there. And we know from a temperature depth recorder that our long line was set at about 2,000 feet. And this one took the bottom hook. So it was definitely down pretty far. And just to give you some perspective, um, if I, it was like, kind of like if I was fishing on the top of the Empire State Building and that shark was on the pavement, that's kind of how far we, we pull them up for. If, if not 
um, deeper than that because that's not actually 2,000 feet. So sharks are diverse, they live everywhere, but to a lot of people when you say shark, that's what they think of, probably that exact picture. That's from the poster or, or, or the book of Jaws. Um, and they, when they picture that, they think they're thinking about a great white shark. That is actually a, a bloody terrible rendition of a great white shark. There's all kinds of things wrong with why that's not actually a great white shark, but it is supposed to be. That, the great white shark is the protagonist of, of Jaws. So Jaws was actually, I'm not sure if people know this, it was uh, based on a, a real series of shark attacks that took place very close to us now in New, in New Jersey in 1916. And in 1916, in the space of a week, uh, there were five shark attacks, four of them fatal. Um, three of the, two of them took place on ocean beaches uh, on the Jersey coast. And then three of the attacks took place in a, in a creek called Matawan Creek. And um, it caused hysteria, absolute hysteria. At the time, people didn't think that sharks could attack people. And they were blaming it on everything from whales to um, German submarines. There was real hysteria. This was discussed in Congress, the Senate, the, about this huge shark problem in, in New Jersey. And as you can see, they decided they'd put up volleyball nets to stop the sharks from um, getting, in the, uh, getting in the creeks and things. Of course, I mean, if I was to stop, wanted to stop a shark attack, the, the best thing to do is go you know, get a shotgun and go stand out and have some of when you have your, have your swim. Well, the, what happened was th this guy right here, his name's Michael Schl uh, Schleiser, and he, um, he's from, he was from Jamaica, and he set out from Jamaica Bay, and he went out and he towed a trawl net, and he was, he was actually after the shark. Because at the time, they thought one shark did all these attacks, right? Because there can only be one shark out there. So he must have done all of these attacks. And he caught this shark right here, and this is, in fact, a juvenile great white shark. And when he opened it up, Apparently, there was some human bones in its stomach. Now, nobody, nobody, nobody knows where these bones are. Nobody's actually verified that there's human bones. Um, but this shark copped the blame. And that was really what the inspiration for Jaws uh, really was, was this series of shark attacks. And in point of fact, white sharks don't go up creeks. So we can, almost, we can be very sure that the shark, the shark attacks up that Matawan Creek was not actually a, a great white. But nevertheless, the great white got a lot of notoriety from this incident. And then, of course, once the novel and film Jaws came out, then it was off the charts. This was definitely the new kind of monster. Now, I went to the, this is the International Shark Attack File website. I went to it this morning to give you up-to-date information on white shark attacks so you can make informed swimming decisions. <laughs> so the news is good because there has never ever been a shark attack proven to be from a white shark in New York. So um, knock on wood, we're all good there. New Jersey has uh, five attacks, two fatal. Last one was 1916. That's because the international shark attack file still counts these, the, these ones in, uh, that were in the ocean in 1916. They attribute it to that shark. Whether or not that's true is, is very debatable. But you'll see all along the East Coast, I mean, it's just a tiny number of shark, uh, fatal shark attacks by whites. And in most cases, it's a long time ago. In all cases, it's a long time ago. And in fact, in all of the United States, including California, there's only been 12 fatal shark attacks attributed to white sharks. So obviously, the hysteria is well, well, well out of proportion to the actual risk. So when I see these animals, I don't see a monster. I see an absolutely beautiful fish. This is some video that I shot in New Zealand in uh, March. This is a great white shark. We were doing some research on this species. Um, this is about 10 feet long. So this, this is what they're like. They're not the death fish from hell. They're just, um, so they're just a predator out there making a living. Um, this is it. This is, in, uh, this is in March, at, at the very bottom of New Zealand, a place called Stewart Island, right by a seal colony. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a fish. It's, it's a cool fish, it's a beautiful fish, but I don't, I don't get the hysteria. But um, you'll see it really quite clearly now. It's quite, quite a nice looking animal. And they do, they're not that afraid of boats. <laughs> so, you know, this is, this is just, just a fish, it's a predator. 
Now, I'm not saying I'd go jump in and give that little thing a hug or anything like that. That's, a, that's an animal that can do some damage if it wants to, but it's not a hysterical eating machine as it's been portrayed to be. So um, where does the white shark fit in within the, the shark group? Well, there's eight living orders of sharks, and the white sharks fit in in this group here called the lamniforms. The lamniforms also include things like the, the mako shark, the short fin mako, or mako as it's called in the United States, um, the uh, poor beagle shark, the basking shark, these are all in this, this group lamniforms. It's not actually very, there's not many species of lamniforms, but they are quite cool looking sharks. So how do you tell a white shark from others? Well, one characteristic is the tooth. Um, it's triangular, very broadly triangular, has very large serrations on the side, as you can see. Um, that's an upper jaw tooth. The lower jaw teeth are, are slimmer. Um, in terms of a diagnostic character, if you're swimming and you want to know if that shark is a great white and you should get out of the water, I wouldn't recommend using the teeth as a diagnostic <laughs> character, so I'll give you some other ones. The uh, one a real good one here is the tail. It's, it's called a lunate tail or a homocircle tail where both lobes are the same size. That gives it a lot of thrust. And as you can see, I mean, they, have a, they, they swim quite, quite fast. Um, other characteristics is there's a keel on the, uh, on the tail right here, uh, either side. Um, they have a black spot on the tips of their pectoral fins, and they have very long gill slits. They have five of them, and they have a big black eye. And one of the key characteristics for this group is they don't have an eyelid. A lot of sharks have an eyelid so that when they go to bite something, there's a, there's a membrane that comes over called the nictitating membrane. It's essentially an eyelid, and it covers the eye. White sharks don't do that. They actually, when they want to protect their eye, their whole eye rotates in their head. So it looks like there's a, a membrane covering it, but it's just exposing the back part of the eye. So white sharks are actually reasonably easy to identify. Um, as far as sharks go, uh, very little training, you can identify a white shark pretty, pretty smartly. 